Hi all, hope you're doing well at home during the pandemic. Uh, I've managed to catch up with another league legend from the 1990s and 2000s. It is Newcastle's Robbie O'Davis. Robbie, welcome. Not happy with the word legend, but I'll, I'll run with it tonight. I'm great, mate. How are you going? <laughs> yeah, I'm good. I'm good. How are you, mate? I'm, uh, I'm loving the background there. You picked that yourself. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's like a bit of a funky town sort of scene, you know, like, it's the only dance move I ever bloody know, is that one. Uh, now, what a career, Robbie. 223 first-grade games for Newcastle, 12 origins for Queensland, eight test matches for Australia, two premierships, uh, 1997, and also 2001 against my beloved Eels, which I've never forgiven you for. Uh, could you have dreamed of all that as a kid growing up in Toowoomba? Not at all. And in the end, I wanted more. You know, I, I retired at the age of 32 because I did not want to leave Newcastle and I did not want to play against a town that gave me ticket tape breaks. So um, when Knights said they had enough of me, they want to move me on, I left kicking and screaming. and I'd done all these publicity stunts saying that I'd play for nothing and all that sort of stuff just because I didn't want to quit the game of rugby league at the age of 32. What about Darren Allen, mate? The 1997... The grand final win over Manly. Everyone talks about Darren Albert and that try in the last minute. It was spectacular. But, hey, you scored two tries. You took out Clive Churchill medal. Yet everyone talks about Darren Albert. They always talk about Albert. Yeah. Um, yeah, I scored the other two. And just to make that a point here, <laughs> we did score the other two. They talk about Albert. They talk about Joey's big final pass and all that sort of stuff. And, but, yeah, I, I got lucky enough to have a couple of good touches. <laughs> Hey, I've got a little assignment for you. Because um, you like to mix it up in the thick of the action, you must have heard some great sledges out there. Either you copped them or you gave them or you heard them yourself out there. I just wanted you to give us the top five sledges, if you could. Uh, jog the memory and think of a few. Um, starting from number five. Anything spring to mind? Well, the top sledger was Terry Hill. Just because he couldn't talk freaking without a lisp. So he was probably... He would sit on the blind side of a scrum. In, and the state of origin is the first time I ever heard him. He yells out the back of the scrum, your freaking socks are down to someone. And it's the, most, it's the worst. It's, it's those number five. It's like, and then everyone sort of said, that was stupid. What, what would you sledge with a shit sledge like that? So he's like, yeah, good on So that's number five, just saying that's fifth, probably in the category of 100 worst sledges. I remember sitting at a Belmore one day and I was about to wait for a kickoff and I was looking along this line this is probably number four and I was looking on the line and um you had Terry Lamb kicking the ball off you had Jeremy McCracken on the left hand side and you had folks uh Gillespie I think Lang Mack it's all these amazing players yeah. so I'm sitting there looking at these guys I'm a 90 year old kid and I'll make behind me goes oh F U A Davis yeah F and this and all that sort of stuff and I'm like, oh, right, yeah. and one of them goes one of them goes you need a bullet in your back <laughs> hang on <laughs> I'm mean, like, waiting for this thing. So next minute, the ball's going in the air from the kickoff. Scared of all shit of what was in front of me. Scared of the bloke behind me saying he's going to shoot me. And then I've just heard this big crack, crack of thunder, like something I've never heard before. And I actually turned to the side and the ball's hit me arms and dropped it. And at, anyone that knows Belmore knows there's a train track run straight behind you. About And the actual train ran straight behind as the freaking ball <laughs> I was about the ball. It sounded like a bloody crack of a gun. So, yeah, so that, that got me. That got me. Yeah, it might have been one of those detonators. He used to run over the detonators to, to <laughs> the workers. Mate, that got me that day. Oh, uh, uh, let's look <laughs> through. The three? I was run, playing against Tigers, and Jared McCracken and I uh, come, come face to face. And he tackled me, and he gets up and says, uh, he was sort of push and shove, and Jared McCracken goes, at least I don't kiss the next door neighbour. What? <laughs> so anyway, that, that was the worst sledge of all time. And we're walking off the game, I give him a handshake, and I said, hey, what, what sort of sledge was that? At least I don't kiss the next door neighbour. He said, oh, mate, Sean Hoppy's brother told me you kissed the next door neighbour the other night, and you're married. And I went, oh, I did too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I got the old... Yeah, I was drunk that night. Anyway, we're divorced now. happy to reveal that. <laughs> no, we're divorced now. That's, that's my first one. <laughs> you got any others? Number two? Mate, number two happened in uh, Toowoomba as a 15-year-old kid. Um, I ran out the field and Dad was just turned 40 and I played with my father. And um, my father says, 
I've got an idea. I'm going to tap the ball. He's a 130 kilo hooker that day. If I was using your front row, but because he wanted to be the person that gives his, um, I, I think I was 15, I just turned 16. Um, I want to give the kid, my kid, the ball every time. Yeah, at five eight. So I want to give the ball to my kid all the time to protect him. So we're playing East Coast by Johnny Lang um, at the time in a in a trial match, and um, Dad says we've got a penalty. He said, just start on the left hand side. We're going to tap it. I'm going to run to the fence. I'm going to pop it down the left hand side. And as I was like, geez, that's a bloody good idea. You know, they're not going to think that the skinny little bloody you know sixty eight kilo kid's going to run off this massive big hooker down the left hand side. How smart are we? It's like this happened in the living room last night. We just figured it out. Let's do it today. <laughs> so anyway, the big fella taps the ball and stands there. Anyway, does not move. And I'm sort of, I sort of moved ahead of him and I went back behind him. And then the defensive line moved up and Dad just handed me the ball and let these big front rowers crunch me. And uh, he looked down at me and said, welcome to first grade, son. <laughs> and uh, I, it wasn't a sledge. It was a attitude adjustment for the rest of my life. <laughs> Um, that was pretty good. But I remember one day in under 19s, there's a number one sledge. Um, and this is a sledge. Right. We were playing the, the under 19 grand final. We were playing, just about to play. And I was down on the wing and I rolled my sleeves up. I rolled my sleeves up. Under 19 player or 16, 17 years of age come down. Just about to wait for the kick off. And I yelled out, number two, you've got to have biceps to roll your sleeves up. And I remember. <laughs> Rolling them down, <laughs> and I'll never ever roll my sleeves up ever again. <laughs> and I'm surprised I know Joey or, or Matty Johns on that list. Did they give out a few sledges in their time? They they would sledge each other or the teammates. <laughs> they wouldn't sledge the opposition. Uh, actually, to think of the day that Joey threw the ball at Lee Jackson, that, that, and that's got to be some of the funniest things I've ever seen. He was on the field, and Jacko was just getting shit service all day. And he just chucked it, he knocked it on, and just picked the ball up and just chucked it in his head on the field. Now, that's number 10. That's got to be the, the best freaking thing I've ever seen in my life. Very good. <laughs> Thanks uh, for sharing those insights. Eh? And uh, certainly, if you pick up this book here, one of, a great read. This is Rugby League's Heroes of Yesterday by Daniel Payne. Very good read. Um, you'll hear more from Robbie O'Davis. In that book, actually, Robbie, I was interested to see uh, your thoughts on the shoulder charge. You're a fan of the shoulder charge, and you reckon it was a mistake... Uh, getting it out of the game. Definitely. My own, probably one of the worst victims of the shoulder charge um, in the last minute of 1993 against East. Uh, what are they called? West, West Tigers uh, or just Balmain Tigers back then. Robbie Beckett ran. 36-6 uh, to six were winning by in the last minute of the game. Ran all the way across the field and he, he had a bad game that day himself, Robbie. And he, I think he just wanted to take it out of somebody and he Dropped his shoulder straight in the enemy chin and, and busted my nose and uh, split my palate down my throat. And still to this day, um, what are we, uh, 17 years later, my nose still bleeds every day from that, that horrific injury. And uh, I've ended up getting ADHD from the, the brain damage that went from the palate split down my throat. So I got a lot of injury after that um, one dramatic hit. And so I, I would like to say that I was actually the worst victim of the shoulder charge of all time because it was just a blatant shoulder charge. But it's what makes our game. It's what makes our game bloody perfect. Paul Harrigan off the kickoff, knocking out freaking... Actually, knocking himself out as Spud Carroll dropped his shoulder into him. This every origin match, every grand final, every start of every match, this contact of big men playing it. So, ban it from away from NRL, but keep it in that level because when you get to that level, you're trained to compete. And it's like um, going to war with blanks. You know, you don't go to war with blanks. You know, we... When you get to that level, it's, it's war. And when you go there, you don't go with blanks. You go to fire hard. And, um, and we, we choose to do what we do. Uh, Robbie, it was an absolute pleasure watching you play. You had a great career. And thanks for having a little chat to us today. Mate, absolute pleasure on my behalf too. And I hope you enjoyed that guy in the background. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the great backgrounds. It's very hard to top that one. Oh, uh, how good is it? How good is it? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Robbie. Thanks everyone for watching. Uh, stay safe and we'll see you next time.